Well, in this series, The Big Five, we are on the fifth of the commitments that we make to God and each other as United Methodists. We've looked at prayers, presence, you can join me if you want, prayers, presence, gifts, service, and today is witness. Prior to, I think it was 2008, the series would have been over. There was only a big four, which isn't quite the same. In 2008, the General Conference of the United Methodist Church added witness. Our baptism vows include, will you accept the freedom and power God gives to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? And we say, I will. The whole congregation affirms at a baptism or receiving a new member that we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. So what do these lofty affirmations look like on the ground? When we live these out, that is witness demonstrating who we believe God is, one who calls and empowers us to resist evil, injustice, and oppression, and who we are, those who proclaim the good news and live and love like Jesus, acting out our faith. In the scripture Mike read for us, the lectionary passage, the gospel reading for today, The first moment of witness for Bartimaeus is that he's not shy to admit he needs Jesus. He believes Jesus can help him, and his life will be more meaningful and complete with the touch and presence of Jesus. He shouts for Jesus on the street. Now, we don't necessarily need to shout on the street, but isn't this a step for us Two, when we can be curious about Jesus, wonder how he might change our lives, and be honest about it. That's a start to witness. Then saying out loud we have faith that we find Jesus meaningful in our lives. This is witness. And it's not preachy or pushy, or at least it doesn't need to be. Just a statement of where we're at, what we're working on, what we find valuable, that the ways we attend to our health and well-being include faith. Bartimaeus reaches out to Jesus as the son of David, understanding the religious authority and lineage of Jesus and asks for mercy. Bartimaeus seems to request and receive both spiritual and physical healing. He wants to see. By the way, there are different ways of talking about faith or Jesus or a faith community that will resonate with different people and generations. I wonder if a way of connecting with what my generation cares about and wants to be mindful of is to use language of health and well-being. We're middle-aged. We're figuring out we need to attend to our holistic health and help our growing children do the same. That's one legitimate way of looking at and talking about what we do as a faith community. Invest in spiritual well-being and reach out to the community with the love and grace of Christ. I wonder if it's time to revisit the ways we talk about our vision and our mission for a new generation. Stay tuned. Back to Bartimaeus. How, uh, uh, sorry, Bartimaeus encounters Jesus and his life is changed. 
and he will forever be a living witness to who Jesus is and what Jesus does. And he makes sure his life, his sight, is witness directly tied to Jesus. He follows him, quite literally. And witness for us is analogous. How are we as individuals in relationship with Jesus? How might society be different if we, with the freedom and power of God, resisted evil, injustice, and oppression? What would life look like? What do we look like as people connected to Jesus and each other in a life and community of faith? Now, witness does not mean we're perfect. I believe witness can be just as powerful in the ways we handle our own shortcomings or failures or sin. When we wrong somebody, when we make a choice that is not good for us or is harmful to others or the environment, when we fail to do the, God, the good God sets before us, then what? There are Christian resources including confession, owning what we've done before God and as appropriate before others, not making excuses or blaming something or someone else, but admitting we messed up. And repentance, expressing remorse and taking steps to make right what was wrong by the grace of God. We trust God can change us and help us to do better going forward, and we commit to living like it. Christian witness is acting practically for justice and equity for all God's people and creation, using the gift of our lives to be part of God's grace and peace. Again, lofty, inspiring, but ideal. It's really just about attending to our own growth and health, taking care of ourselves in body, mind, and spirit, caring for others and for the earth, doing what we can directly with those close to us and perhaps indirectly for many. For instance, with the ways we buy and use products the kind of policies and candidates we support, with our generosity to our United Methodist Connectional Giving and other good, responsible causes. And it's being honest and making a change when we get it wrong, when we hurt those around us, when we neglect our relationship with God. If you remember the scripture readings over the last few weeks in this series, we've seen those we might have thought we would trust or want to be like. But they fail to know what the kingdom of God is really like. Do you remember? The apostles in our week on presence told the children to go away. The rich young man knew something was wrong and that he needed Jesus, but when Jesus invited him to freedom and generosity, he was unable to embrace it. Then last week, James and John, friends and disciples of Jesus, totally didn't get it, asking to be on Jesus' right and left in glory. And Jesus had to explain that being with Jesus means giving away your life in service to others. Then we come to today. We've had the apostles and a rich guy. He's got something right, right? The friends of Jesus, they're not showing us by positive example, witness. Today's unlikely candidate is the blind guy on the side of the road, shouting uncomfortably. And finally, someone gets it, shows us how to embrace discipleship and witness. As an aside, maybe another witness 
is not to do what the crowd d does to Bartimaeus when he cries out for mercy. They shush him. Perhaps a better witness would be to choose solidarity with the one that is suffering, that is seeking help and justice, and help him in that pursuit of mercy in community and in faith. So sometimes those we think will show us how to be, how to live, end up teaching us by the ways they get it wrong. And that's good too. The saints are bound to give us a mixed witness. What they get right and we do well to emulate and what they get wrong. What we can learn from and do better. I, for one, am grateful for both and grateful for those who've gone before and that they've shown us how to live a life of faithfulness even when they sometimes get it wrong. And sometimes those we may assume have little to teach us end up being powerful witnesses. Not just Bartimaeus, but someone young who we think doesn't have much wisdom or experience, yet surprises us. Or someone old we think is out of touch and can't possibly understand ends up connecting with us and helping us through. Even someone who's not part of a faith community or practices a different faith can teach us and invigorate our own faith. So let us be open to receiving witness even from unlikely people and situations. And back to us. What about us? What is our witness? What can people see about who God is and who we are from the ways we live? What we do, how we treat people as a congregation and as individuals. When someone walks into desert skies, how will they be received and treated? Usually, I think quite well. What if we're not sure what to do with them? And that's bound to happen too, right? And that's okay, and it's okay even to be honest about it. What, are you interested in particular ways of connecting with our congregation? How could I help you feel comfortable? You know, just ask if you're not sure. What do we as a congregation, a faith community, contribute to our wider community? Well, I can think of several things over the last few months. We've participated in fun, safe activities for families at Vail Family Connection Day, at the Tank of Verde Fall Festival at the elementary school, just this last Friday at Ocotillo Ridge at their Trunk or Treat. We are generous in our community. There's nonprofits doing great work that we support. We are a place to be welcomed. I trust. If we weren't here, sometimes churches, congregations, leaders are encouraged to ask ourselves this question. If we weren't here, what would the community notice? Then how about for us as individuals or as a family? Maybe a question for around the dinner table or on the way home from school this week is where did you see God's grace at work today? How are we receiving witness? Or how did you show God's love today? How are we putting faith into action? So we are witnesses to one another. I'm grateful for the ways that you all show me what it means to be a community of faith, to be people of faith. We are witnesses to the world showing what God is like and what life following Jesus is like. And there's no one way to do it. That's why a community is great, right? You all pursue and live out your faith in different ways than I do, and I'm grateful. So friends, as we wrap up our series next week, we'll bring it home next week. 
thematically and with your commitment cards. If you haven't turned in your commitment card yet, you're invited to bring it next week. If you have, that's great too. We've been praying each week for how we might act on that word for the week that week. Time now, if you haven't yet, to consider how you will be present, how you will participate with Desert Skies in 2025 with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. I'm in, and I'm so glad that you are too. In the name of the creator, redeemer, and sustainer, amen.